Normally I complain about companies or people just putting up Christmas decorations or getting in the Christmas spirit, as they would say, way before it is even necessary. Like we're not even in, De in December, right? But literally from the 1st of November, the moment Halloween finishes here in Japan, companies cannot like wait to put their Christmas decorations up and market and do all that kind of thing for the Christmas season. One of those companies is Starbucks. So I'm not gonna lie, I've been really enjoying the gingerbread lattes early this year. I mean, well, actually in Japan, it's early every year. Um, I don't know if it's the same everywhere else in the world. Maybe you guys can tell me. In Australia, definitely like from the 1st of November, companies weren't like putting up Christmas decorations, but definitely here in Japan, they do. Do they do that in the States? Do you guys have all the Christmas um, gingerbread lattes yet? Uh, I don't know. But anyways, that aside, we are back to work on the mini today. Uh, so what I need to do is replace that cam angle sensor and top engine mount. Should be a very quick job. I think probably about 15, 20 minutes to do that. Um, and then we should be done with the Mini and head back home. So for now, let's get into the Mini and pick things up once we got the hood popped and some tools and we're ready to start working. So I started digging into it right away. Um, this is the engine mount that we need to replace, which is pretty easy. Long extension through here to undo the two bolts on this side, two bolts on this side, and this will pop right out. And as you can see, it's split in here and here. Um, this is going to be a little bit more difficult, this cam angle sensor. Uh, to be able to get to the 10mm bolt that holds this on, I have to undo the actual engine mount bracket here. So I think there's three 16s, one there, one there, one there. It's a bit oily here too, so I'm going to clean all that up. Um, and then this bracket will come off, then I can get to that. So what I've done, so I've got the car in a jack stand, and I've got the jack supporting the bottom of the engine. Should be enough to stop this thing from tipping while I undo this side and uh, replace that cam angle sensor. And then we should be good. So I'm going to quickly get that smashed out and I'll pick you guys up once we get all these parts replaced and we're ready to start it. So I managed to get this bracket off. There was a couple extra bolts hiding in front and behind the engine that I didn't see initially. Well, we got those off. And then uh, we also discovered, yeah, how you going there? Mr. Engine mount here is completely screwed. So luckily I have brand new ones of those as well. So I'll be putting one of those in. Um, at the same time, looks like we're doing both of these engine mounts. Um, but now we can get to this bolt here that holds the uh, cam angle sensor in. So I'll get that undone, switch that out, switch both engine mounts now, and then we'll be good to go. So hopefully you can kind of still see the car. It's really dark right now. It's crazy how dark it gets so fast here right now. Um, it gets like this dark at around quarter past five, like 5.15 p.m pretty much almost pitch black. It's insane, um, but this is winter here in Japan. And uh, I did get the engine mounts completely done on both both the top and the side one on the engine. Um, also cam angle sensor installed, started her up, runs totally fine. Um, the only thing we got left to do now are tires and O2 sensors. O2 sensors should be arriving by the end of next week. I got those from the States as well because in Japan they wanted like $250 for them, but I could get them out of the States for 45 bucks. No brainer. Um, so yeah, we'll wait for those. Tires and stuff will sort out as well next week. But for now, the car's pretty much all fixed and good to go and resell. Um, we just need to do those last little things. Uh, for now though, I'm gonna pack everything up, park the car back up in the storage yard up there, and then uh, we'll kind of wait till the rest of those other parts arrive for it and we'll be good. It is now the next day and we are back home and I'm actually trying to diagnose another issue on the skyline. As you guys know, things just aren't really going too well for this old girl and I'm trying to make her last as long as she can and I'm still like trying to be really optimistic that it's just something really, really simple that's wrong with this thing. Um, but anyways, that aside, uh, everything in the data that I keep sending Darren just keeps saying that there's some kind of boost leak in the system of the car. But you guys know I've done boost leaks on this thing time and time again with my little like, you know, car compressor thing, bring it up to 10 PSI, I spray the soapy water everywhere and can't find a leak. But, Darren said, let's bring it up to 15, 20 PSI and see if you start finding something then, like once the boost gets above that 10 PSI mark, um, because it still acts like, and everything in the data looks like there's some kind of boost leak or vacuum leak somewhere that's only happening under high pressure. So what I decided to do was jump on Amazon and buy probably the cutest air compressor I have ever seen. The thing is so quiet, it's awesome as well. So I got something that'll actually give me like 20 PSI consistently into uh, 
the system of, you know, we're going to put a little boost thing in here where we can connect the air compressor to and we're going to fill the entire uh, intercooler system and intake manifold and stuff with over 20 psi. Hopefully, then we're going to find our boost leak or our, the issue that keeps coming up that we just have no idea what's going on. Um, I also changed out the fitting finally on this, so this will actually work. Should work now. Hell yeah. But yeah. Best thing about this thing is I can keep this at home and whenever I need to pump tires, I'll have this little guy here and it's quiet and does the job so it'll keep the Karens at bay. Um, but I'm gonna get my boost leak tester out, take off this pipe and hook it up. We'll double uh, hose clamp it too so it won't shoot out at me. And then we'll fill this thing up with some real PSI and see if we can find where this leak is. This mysterious phantom leak that shows in the data but doesn't show anywhere else. I wonder if it's actually just like potentially low compression. I should do a compression test on this but we don't have much light left so. Yeah, today's been busy for me. So hopefully, we'll find out now what's going on. I can actually hear a big boost leak somewhere. What? You're kidding. There's totally a huge boost leak here. Wow. So, that finally tore open. Look at that sucker. That finally tore wide open. So there's one boost leak. It's all about just getting more PSI, I guess. Like I knew that that was worn, but I never knew it was popped. All right, well, we'll change that. That'll be one coupler to fix. At least we got that. Do you guys remember when I bought this the other day? I'm so glad I did because now we can change that and keep checking the rest of the system. So I switched out the coupler, here's the old one. And I don't know if you can see this too well, but the inside of it is covered in oil. And then I had a quick look at my intercooler and you can see a fair bit of oil sitting on the bottom there. Not like a lot, but enough to prove that my theory about this turbo pushing oil out past the seals is definitely correct. Um, there's no other way that oil could get in my intercooler. There's no, nothing's piped into the intake here whatsoever. So the only way oil is getting into my intercooler is through that turbo. Um, so I think that the turbo is where my oil consumption issues are. And I had this issue with the previous Mumba turbo that was on here too. Um, I did email backwards and forwards with them for ages and they said they tested the other one I sent them and they didn't find any seal issues with it. I just think that they're not designed to handle the type of oil pressure that this is getting. Um, because I'm running 15W50 in here and uh, when it's cold that's when I normally see the most smoke coming out. Once the engine's kind of heated up and warmed up I don't really see any oil smoke coming out the rear. So that's obviously when the pressure drops a bit because the oil's not as thick anymore. So I think it's just I'm running a really thick oil and that these turbo seals on these Mumba turbos are not designed to handle super high pressure. In realistically really your turbo should not with the restrictor in there, they still shouldn't see anything above 40 PSI. Um, I do have one of those TurboSmart um, uh, turbo oil pressure regulators, which I will try installing on this and see if that fixes it. Uh, but for now, obviously, like my goal is to rebuild everything. So I don't really see the point in messing around and trying to sort out the problem when I can just kind of use this as a daily until uh, we redo everything anyways. Because, you know, I want to do a full build on this thing, get rid of the low mount setup, go for a top mount, get a forward facing plenum, all that kind of stuff, and go big. So, waiting for the compressor to just get some more uh, pressure built up in its little tank there, and then we're gonna charge the system again and see if we can find any more leaks. But that seems to be the biggest one, and we'll see what else we can find. I, I seriously hate that literally every time I'm working on this car, I'm doing a boost leak check and finding more boost leaks. And even though, like previously, I fixed the boost leak with this coupler here, changed and fixed that, and then checked and pressurized the entire system, no problem, so I was like, sick, we're all good, and then literally now another coupler. So, 
<sighs> it is the way it is because this whole time I'm like, nah, there can't be another boost leak. I just checked it, but here we go, checking it again, finding another one. <laughs> Never ending circle. So time warping ahead, all the boost leaks are fixed in the skyline. I went and picked up this random hitchhiker. What's up? What's up? Yeah. What Why do you think of uh? The same hoodie, Sam? We're not wearing the same hoodie. Yes, Sam. Yours is like no, off white. I bought this when yours, I was telling you, and yours? you're like, why did you buy this? How much did the nice hoodie looking? cost, babe? It's ninety US dollars. Okay. okay. Nice hoodie. It's cheaper than someone else's one. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shots fired at Okachan. <laughs> no, his hoodie is actually a thicker than these, so. The Yashio factory hoodies are worth their weight in gold. Anyways, uh, we're going to go for a bit of boosting now and just really see uh, what the car feels like. Um, initially, it does feel like it's got more boost there in the mid-range and low end. So, uh, we'll see what she feels like now. But yeah, nonetheless, I'm not really like looking to really beat on this thing. She does sound good though. Well, I was really looking forward to showing you guys just how good the car feels now with uh, that boost leak fixed. But uh, the weather had other plans. It's been raining a fair bit now, so there's no point trying to do a pull. We'll just lose traction and I don't want to risk anything. So we'll leave it there, guys. Once we get home, I'll wrap things up from there. So back home now, and I wanted to just take a moment to, first of all, thank you, each and every one of you who are watching this video all the way to the end. Leave me something special down in the comment section. Pineapple, right? Pineapple if you made it this far, then I know. Um, but that aside, I just wanted to say like, I know the last few vlogs, like they haven't really been doing well with views and stuff like that. I know not too many people are interested in, I guess like what I'm doing right now with the mini and all this kind of chore like stuff that I've been catching up on. Like uh, recently I haven't been able to put as much effort into my videos as I would like to. And that's sh just simply because I am so busy behind the scenes right now trying to get all my money I can together for the shop and stuff, plus everything else that's happening behind the scenes and planning and stuff. And it's like everything right now is just waiting till we can get this shop. And once everything's go ahead there, then content's gonna be pretty much this nonstop, nice, steady flow, um, which I'm really excited about. It makes my job easier, obviously, and it makes you guys, uh, I guess, the viewing experience a lot nicer too, because you're gonna keep getting this nice kind of consistent flow. Um, but yeah, I, I'm sure you've probably noticed the last few videos may have been a bit repetitive or just kind of like, eh, and, and that's simply because this is a daily vlogging channel and every day I may not have like this super crazy stuff to show you guys or do. Um, especially right now coming into winter, things are slowing down with drift events and you know, sooner, soon by the time it hits January, there'll be snow everywhere. Um, which is actually something I want to try and do. I want to do some snow drifting at FBC circuit. So there'll be some cool stuff coming with that. But yeah, things are definitely like, uh, uh, I'm very reliant on this shop right now. So things seem to be going through, um, trying to like literally just scrounge everything I can into this to make it affordable and, and be able to, to do it and, and pull the trigger. Um, I'm probably gonna be broken eating two minute noodles for quite a while afterwards. Um, but um, yeah, it is what it is. And I'm just excited to be able to get the space and actually do something, get my cars there and actually start doing these bigger projects that I just can't do in my driveway or at a storage yard somewhere, you know what I mean? So anyways, that aside guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you smash that like button, write us a comment and subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next one. Big moves are coming guys, really big moves. Also, um, really cool giveaway should be coming next week. So keep an eye out for that. Peace out. Jamata.